what if you are the last person on earth? So we are here with our test buddy Jack and we have an amazing experiment for him. Jack wakes up late because the radio does not come on. Outside there is only the sound of the wind and of the birds in the trees. The roar of the jumbo jets coming into land is absent and most shockingly so is the ever present rumble of traffic. As the day wears on the full horrible bizarre truth dawns. Jack is completely and utterly alone. To wake up and find oneself the only human alive marooned in the modern world is which everyone else has disappeared or been killed by some mysterious virus is both the stuff of nightmares and of fantasy. For this would be a tainted paradise, a world in which you could do anything you wanted. You would be a god, a king, but your kingdom would be empty. Those of a more rugged individualist bent would, one suspects, relish the challenge of remaking the world in their own image. But what is the reality? How long would the average person like our Jack survive if they woke up to find themselves the only human being left on the planet? After coming to terms with the shock and the grief, the loss of loved ones and the sheer bewilderment of it all, how quickly would 21st century man whose practical skills extend no further than wiring a plug and putting some shells be able to adapt to a world where he was responsible for every aspect of his survival. Survival experts have priority of necessities. At the top are water, food and shelter. The shelter in a world full of empty buildings would be no problem. But what about sustenance? A man can survive six weeks without food but only six days without water. With everyone gone, no electricity and no maintenance, the pumping stations and the treatment works that supply water to the taps would soon stop working. There would be a large amount of fresh water stored in domestic tanks, but this would go stale quite rapidly. In fact, Jack would have to rely on that symbol of modern decadence, bottled water. If he or she broke into a large supermarket, they might find there are several thousand liters of the stuff purified, sealed in handy storage containers in the warehouse out the back. Fortunately, supermarkets also contain a great deal of preserved foods. Most tinned meats and vegetables have sell-by dates a couple of years. Hence, but in the reality is that you could probably live off it quite safely for decades. So food and drink would not be a problem, although fresh foods would be off the menu after a few days, unless Jack could grow and gather crops and fish or hunt, which would be problematic for most of us. And as the weeks turn into months and months into years, there would be other problems. It would be a good idea to get out of the cities, for example, in the book The World Without Us by author Alan Wiesman speculated that would happen if Earth's most invasive species, humans, was suddenly wiped out. It wouldn't take long, he pointed out, for the works of man to start crumbling. Of course, some of the buildings would last a great length of time. After all, our world is littered with thousand-year-old edifices and there are even a few twice the age in regular use, probably the most complete being the Pantheon in Rome. But few of our structures have been built to Roman standards without regular maintenance and subject to the ravages of rain, frost and heat, most of the Britons of our shoddy housing stock would start to crumble and become dangerous within a decade or so. Roofs would lose their tiles, eaves would lift and walls would absorb moisture, woodwork would rot and everywhere vegetation would push its way through concrete and asphalt. In the long term, Jack would have to choose a solid stone building dating back a century or more. There would be another ever-present threat to a solitary urbanite, fire. One lightning strike could set off a city-wide conflagration with no fire brigade to put it out. The countryside would not be without its hazards either. Food, paradoxically, would be far harder to obtain and forays into the crumbling city and towns would be needed to replenish supplies. Some areas of rural Britain would be worth avoiding, not least because a potent threat to Jack would come from Britain's two dozen or so remaining nuclear reactors. 
mostly dotted around the northern and eastern coasts. If the staff vanished and as backup power supplies failed, a real danger would be that one or more would go into meltdown as cooling pumps failed. The equivalent of several Chernobyls would render big areas of the country uninhabitable. With prevailing winds as they are, it would perhaps be the best to head for the westernmost parts of the country or even try to escape Britain altogether. Assuming Jack avoided this radiation fallout, hygiene would be an issue. If he chose to remain in the city, he would find the lack of main sewage and drainage a problem after only a few days as the pumping stations failed, while rivers would probably be too polluted to bathe in. The only hot water would come from a stove and washing oneself and one's clothes would be a core. As for Jack's health, the lack of any other people to spread infectious disease would be a blessing, but the risk of accidents would be a constant worry. Even a broken limb could quickly prove fatal if the injury was not dealt with correctly. What about transport? With no regular maintenance, most cars would last only a few years before they give up the ghost. Obtaining fuel would first be a matter of symphoning from the tanks of abandoned vehicles, then breaking into filling stations, unscrewing the fronts of the petrol pumps and drawing up fuel from the underground tanks manually. But while the roads would be mercifully free of traffic jams, after a decade most of them would become horribly overgrown with weeds. After 20 years, many would be impassable except in the most rugged four-wheel drive vehicles. After 50 years, would be growing through the motorways. Fortunately, civilization would have equipped Jack with the ultimate instruction manual. The combined wisdom of the millions of books contained within the world's libraries. With no one to run the servers and no electricity, the internet would shut down almost immediately. Although individual computers could perhaps be get going indefinitely using some sort of solar power generator. How to mend a broken car and how to mend a broken arm, how to hunt, how to sail a boat, it's all there in the black and white. Yes, life would be hard and sometimes brutish, but written help would be on the tap. Provided he kept his wits about him, was of reasonable practical bent and was lucky enough to get stay healthy, Jack could enjoy many years of relative comfort, even luxury. There would be certainly be some pleasures to keep him or her occupied, but it would be interesting to see how quickly nature regains the upper hand. How long, for example, before escapees from the zoos made themselves a new home in the wild? How long before the forests began their march into the cities? What would happen to all the domestic animals? Would packs of feral dogs become a threat? Or would man's best friend remain on good terms with the only representative of our species. Interestingly, there is one place on earth that offers a clue as to likely wilderness Jack would inhabit. The one previously inhabited area that has been abandoned by humanity is that surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear plant, which has been empty for nearly 22 years. Surprisingly, nearby cities have become heavens for wildlife the empty streets echoing to the sounds of hiring wolves and a hundred of species of songbirds. The radiation which chased man away has been kind to nature. For the surviving human, there would certainly be fun to ha be had with the remains of our civilization. An enterprising last man could raid the museums and galleries to build a temple to human achievement containing the finest works of art. He could decorate his home with Picassos and Da Vinci's, fill his garden with rodents, rodents and Michelin gelos. He could drive any car, wear the best designer clothes. But in years to come, these pleasures would surely pale and Jack would face a far bigger threat than starvation, thirst, radiation or even disease. For as years turns into decades, Jack would discover the grim truth that humans did not evolve to be solitary. We are tribal pack animals. Jack would probably swap all the treasures of the world for a single companion. It is intriguing to contemplate being the last survivor.
what fun one could have. In reality, once the practicalities had been dealt off, he or she would almost certainly descend into madness. It would quite literally be hell on earth. So that's it guys. Comment down below what you would do if you were the last person on earth. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with your friends and family.